hello welcome in my video channel in this video we are going to see thermal methods of analysis in this technique we have to measure the change in weight loss or change in weight as a function of temperature as the temperature increases or decreases what happen in the molecule what happen in the chemical now this technique is used for as a qualitative as well as for quantitative purpose in this technique the changes in physical or chemical properties of the substance are measured as a function of temperature this method is classified in different thermal techniques like tga thermogrammetric analysis now in this technique we have to measure the change in weight as a function of temperature this technique from that we can plot the thermogram and from that data we can calculate the derivative of this data from that we can calculate the so many things related to the qualitative and quantitative analysis then second technique is a dt dtg differential thermal thermogram or differential thermogrammetric technique where we have to measure the rate of weight change then differential thermal analysis where we have to measure the heat evolved or absorbed dsc differential scanning calorimeter where heat evolved or absorbed that is endothermic or exothermic reactions we can study thermometric titration where change in temperature we have to monitor now this is the one of the thermogrammetric analyzer where we can measure the change in the weight as a function of temperature now in this instrument the simple parts are there first is the furnace the furnace is measure made by the silica or maybe a porcelain it depend on what is the temperature we required to heat the sample then sample holder that is cup it may be made from the quartz material because we have to heat this temperature uh, uh, furnace maybe up to the 1000 degrees celsius at this level we can keep the sample into the thermo sample holder it may be made from the quartz material and it can be placed into the furnace by hanging connected to the balance or it may be a platinum cup platinum cup can hang uh, into the instrument and kept into the crucible uh, it, uh, into the furnace then the dimmer now in this dimmer we can control or we can heat this furnace under the controlled condition with the help of dimmer then the gas cylinder when we can pass the air or nitrogen to make the the um, atmosphere nitrogen atmosphere or oxygen atmosphere in the furnace then thermocouple thermocouple is used to measure the temperature in terms of the millivolt and can be converted into the degree celsius or kelvin then this the furnace uh, the sample holder is connected to the balance and we can measure the weight change in the weight as the function of the temperature the temperature measure in terms of the millivolt this temperature rate is increases with the help of the dimmer constant increasing the rate of flow of current through this coil and the steadily temperature of the furnace is gone increases in the presence of the either nitrogen or oxygen atmosphere now for uh, the sample the sample is kept into the test the holder uh, sample holder it may be a quartz or it may be a platinum initially it is a weight and this weight is at, uh, considered as a zero weight in the balance and a small quantity of the sample is kept into the disk cup and the sample size may be a 10 to 20 mg of the sample particle size may be 100 to 200 uh, 50 mesh size the rate of heating with the help of dimmer we can uh, increase the rate by just only the 3 to 5 degrees celsius per minute the temperature range of the furnace 
starting from the room temperature that is ambient temperature to the 1000 1, degrees Celsius. Atmosphere may be a static air, may be a dynamic air or may be a nitrogen. Static air and dynamic air, continuous flow of the air through the, cylind uh, through the furnace or it may be slowly uh, the uh, uh, heated uh, air can be removed from the furnace slowly. And with the help of reference, the, it may be a magnesium oxide or aluminium. Initially, the standard for the standardization, we can use this as a reference. Now in this uh, technique, what happened? We are measuring the loss in weight as a function of temperature. Now, for example, in case of the calcium oxalate or magnesium oxalate, when we are taking uh, the sample of calcium oxalate kept into the fur, uh, sample holder and this sample holder is kept into the furnace and then we start the heating as a temperature increases from the ambient temperature. It is observed that the, in the first step uh, at 100 to 250 degrees Celsius, the first loss is observed and this loss is due to the, the whatever the adsorbed water uh, uh, coordinated water or lattice water present in the calcium oxalate, this water is removed at this temperature. Then we observe that the second loss where carbon monoxide is removed from the calcium oxalate to form the calcium oxide at 400 to 500 degrees Celsius. Then if we heat continuously, then it is observed that at a 650 degrees Celsius to 850 degrees uh, 50 degrees Celsius temperature, the calcium carbonate get converted into calcium oxide and the CO2 gas. Now we observed that slowly as uh, 3 to 5 degrees Celsius heating rate is increases, we observed that the loss in weight, this nature of the graph is observed, the pyrolysis curve is observed like this. The first loss here, the 100 to 250 degrees Celsius, the second loss is observed at 400 to 500 degrees Celsius and third loss is related to the after 650 degrees Celsius to 800 degrees Celsius, we observed that where the CO2 gas is removed, the sec in the second step, the carbon monoxide is removed. And from the first step, it is observed that the loss is related to the water present in the calcium oxalate is removed to get the dry calcium oxalate. Now in the similar way for maximum magnesium oxalate, we observed that the second graph, the the same type of graph nature is observed initially at the uh, to remove the water molecule then uh, uh, at simultaneously the carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide simultaneously removed from this loss pyrolysis curve we observed that and then it remained constant for the magnesium oxide at after the 500 degrees celsius now in this way uh, we can study this type of compound the thermal reaction we can see as well as we can study the uh, mechanism of the thermal reaction, stability of the thermal reaction. Now these are the uh, benefit of this technique. Now we observe that from the same type of graph, when we observe the derivative of the thermogram, it is observed that slowly it gives, we observe that this is the percentage loss in the weight. At the same time, we can observe the derivative of this graph. And from this point, we can, one can calculate easily the disintegration temperature for this loss. What is the temperature at perfect temperature? What type of loss is observed? First temperature loss, second temperature loss, third temperature loss. And from that derivative curve, one can understand easily the at what temperature the first molecule removed, what at what temperature the second molecule is removed. For a, in case of the calcium oxalate, the water is removed at what temperature, the carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, uh, gases are removed from the compound at what temperature it can be studied with the help of derivative of the thermogrammetric analysis. Now thermogrammetric analysis uh, curve includes the number of steps in the pyrolysis curve. Two steps, one step, three step uh, pyrolysis uh, curve is observed, steps are observed. Then interpretation of each step in loss in weight. We can calculate how much percentage of the uh, loss is observed at each step, it can be observed from the graph. Then number of water molecules and type of water molecule, how many number of water molecules are present in the compound, as well as uh, in suppose, for example, five number of five water, number of water molecules are present, out of which, what type of water, how many number of molecules, water molecules are in the coordinated water molecule, 
then uh, lattice water molecule adsorb water molecules it can be calculated easily from the uh, graph the thermal stability of the compound at what temperature up to what temperature the compound gets stable that type of thermal stability can be calculated at the same time the thermodynamic stability is also calculated from the graph then supportive technique for the spectroscopy from the spectroscopy it is a, a structural analysis now with the structural analysis this uh, the technique is make a supportive technique for the determination elucidation of the structure of the compound then supportive technique for the elucidation of the structure of the compound like ir nmr with the help of this technique we can give the support for the strong support to what type of com uh, functional groups are there what type of compounds are present in the molecule that can be calculated easily this uh, technique is also supportive technique for the determination of empirical and molecular formula of the unknown compound in this way thermogrammetric analysis can be used for uh, the number of applications now in this application what happened the purity of the compound we can judge the purity of the compound then thermal mechanism we can find out the thermal mechanism at what temperature the what type of losses are observed uh, such a type of thermal mechanism can be interpreted disintegration temperature uh, the compound suppose unknown compound or known compound what is the disintegration temperature up to what temperature the compound is stable that can be find out easily with the help of this thermogram then thermal and thermodynamic stability of the compound drying temperature that means the adsorb water at what temperature adsorb water is re completely removed that can be find out easily number and type of water molecules present in the compound can be find out with the help of this thermogrammetric analysis once you know the uh, points uh, loss and temperature the kinetic study can be done with the help of this technique then order of reaction is also calculated with the help of this technique stability constant for the compound is also calculated then composition of the sum of the mixture can be identified for example in case of the magnesium carbon magnesium oxalate and calcium oxalate what is the percentage of magnesium oxalate present in the compound and what is the percentage of calcium oxalate it can be find out with the help of this technique then uh, fa factors affecting uh, in the tg that is instrumental that is heating rate furnace atmosphere and flow rate uh, whether it, uh, it is a dynamic air is used or a static air is used or nitrogen is here uh, is used uh, it what how it affect on the flow rate then geometry and uh, of the pan and the furnace it is also affected then material of the pan is also affected on the analysis then sample related the mass particle size sample history pre treatment packing thermal conductivity heat of reaction these are the factors which affect the sample related and instrumental related factors now differential thermal analysis uh, in this technique uh, the thermal analysis method the test sample and inert reference material it may be alpha alumina material uh, is used or magnesium oxide is also um, can be used undergoes the control heating and cooling with respect to the time if there is a change in a physical or chemical uh, change takes place then temperature difference that is delta t will be the observed that is endothermic or exothermic the plot of the delta t versus t temperature shows the exothermic and endothermic peak at corresponding transitions now in this technique what happened instead of the uh, measurement of the weight loss we can measure the difference in the two compounds the two compounds are kept into the furnace the furnace is heated by with the help of the dimmer under control rate of increasing the heat uh, temperature of the furnace and then two compounds are compared one is a standard compound and another is a unknown compound that is taste sample when we compare with the temperature takes place so the temperature of the first compound and temperature of the second compound with the help of thermocouple we can measure in terms of the millivolt and that can be converted into the temperature uh, uh, in degree celsius or kelvin now in this uh, technique what happen the furnace is used the sample holder is used the dimmer is used thermocouples are used and voltmeter are only used the sample size is similar to the uh, thermogrammetric analysis in dta the same type of uh, 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 factors are there sample size particle size rate of heating temperature range atmosphere and reference compounds are there now with the help of these two compounds we can measure the uh, difference in the temperature in the two compounds at the same time and that can be uh, gives the endothermic reaction or endothermic exothermic reaction if it is endothermic reaction it absorbs the radiation uh, heat and when exothermic it evolves the uh, heat and therefore temperature suddenly change takes place 
and when it is a exothermic peak then heat is evolved from the sample and when it is a heat is absorbed or less then uh, we can say that is an endothermic reaction the graph nature of these two uh, uh, technique the difference in the temperature is plotted on this side and as the function of increasing the temperature we observe that the nature of the graph is like that initially what happened if it is a uh, graph is going to ups up upper side that the difference is increased then it is exothermic and if the temperature difference is the decreases then we can say that it is a endothermic uh, reaction such a type of uh, endothermic or exothermic reaction can be uh, studied with the help of differential thermogrammetric analysis where uh, we are measuring the difference in the temperature of the compound as a function of the increasing the temperature now third technique is the differential scanning colorimeter uh, dsc now it is the thermoanalytical technique in which the difference in the amount of heat required to increase or decrease uh, increase the temperature of a sample and reference sample is measured as a function of uh, temperature this technique was developed by the watson uh, in 1962 now here what happened the 50% portion of the uh, related to the, this is a denaturation and from this uh, difference the in, uh, with respect to the uh, temperature difference uh, what is the heat flow observed in this technique uh, where the scanning uh, in the calorimeter that is a heat evolved or heat uh, uh, absorbed that can be measured easily with the help of this uh, dsc technique now application of the dta and dsc uh, dta is used for the qualitative analysis the both instruments are used in the pharmaceutical industries for the determination of the purity of the compound and it can be used for the identification of the optical isomers polymorphism etc then uh, edible fats oils are characterized with the help of differential uh, thermal analysis and for dsc it is preferred for the quantitative measurement where we require the final quantity of the compound uh, where dsc is used dta is uh, used for the study at the high temperature like mineral fluxes refractory ceramics where we require the higher temperature it may be up to the 3000 degrees celsius or starting from the uh, 1500 degrees celsius to 300000 degrees celsius we can use the dta but at this temperature we cannot use the uh, tga or uh, dsc technique uh, now in this uh, thermal methods of analysis we discuss about the thermogrammetric analysis thermogram thermogram uh, then uh, differential thermal analysis then dta dtg dsc applications of uh, thermogrammetric analysis dta and uh, dsc uh, in this way the thermal methods of analysis a very uh, good technique can be used for the qualitative and quantitative analysis